Isn't it interesting that it could end up being that magnetism is the pathway by which even our energy needs get met? Wouldn't that be interesting if not only it was one of the keys to health and well-being, but that it was also one of the keys in the energy industry, that there may be a whole magnetic capacity that's available that is not in the market and functioning in the marketplace. It could be that this whole pathway is filled with many, many goodies. It is uh, interesting. That brings to mind something that just happened here last month. The a gentleman saw what we were doing on the internet and he came to see me here in my office and, and he says, I want two of those super kings. Uh, magnetic pads, and I want one for each of my two houses, one in Oregon, one in uh, Washington. And so uh, we sold it to him and didn't think any more about it. And then he called and said, do you know what? Now I can run three times further, and my wife can run two times further than she could just a month ago. That's really profound. People spend a lot of money on their beds. Now, this goes under the mattress. Explain the logistics of how this works, this Magnetico pad. It's almost like a solid big magnet. You wouldn't want to sleep on it because it's hard, because uh, it's you know, full of block magnets, and they're so close together, it acts like one big magnet. And so, therefore, you put it underneath your mattress, and it makes a magnetic field that the strongest one actually makes enhancement of the earth magnetic field two stories high and two stories below. So actually, we're, it's acting like a great concentrator of the earth magnetic field, pulling it down through your body while you sleep. And that uh, speeds up the valence electrons like we're talking about, charges them up, and enhances all your body chemistry. Now, the reason, to, another reason why we don't put it on top of the bed is because there's a little tiny peaks of positive in between the magnets, which is only a half inch high. But and just to make sure that people don't get in that positive and have the emergency response, we make sure it goes under the mattress. And that's uh, all part of the design of this magnetic pad. What is your quality control process in terms of manufacturing? I think it's an important question to generate user confidence, aside from what you've shared in the reports and testimonials about this. What's your quality control process in the making of the pads? In the, in the process, uh, it's pretty hard to mess up because you put uh, a whole, uh, that's a good, all the magnets are placed so that they're orientated one way in the uh, we call them cams that feed into the slots in the foam. See this? We take foam and dense foam, and we po uh, poke out a hole the size of the magnet, and so you have a whole foam here full of these holes. And then the cam comes along and places the uh, magnets uh, in each hole. So this is a uh, uh, that's part of the process. So uh, that. And it keeps people from uh, making a lot of mistakes. And then the last thing before we put the last layer on of canvas on the back, we test them with a magnet to make sure that uh, that it isn't, you know, there's no mistakes made or something. A magnet didn't jump and turn over or something. That's great. So you have a testing process. That's really what I wanted to hear. Yeah. How long do these pads last, and how do you make them last longer, or is there just a strict amount of time they will be functional, and then you have to replace them? The loss of magnetism in our pad is 6% in 40 years. That's not much. No, it's not much. That's pretty profound. And can you explain to the audience what is GAUSS? G-A-U-S-S, -S, and why it's relevant and how your different pads have different Gauss measurements. Uh, a Gauss is a measurement of magnetic field. In other words, how, how many lines of flux is coming out from a magnet, okay? And the manufacturers measure their, their magnets by uh, cutting the hole in the middle of the magnet and putting a probe in there, measuring the internal measurement of the, of the magnetic field. So it doesn't really mean much because it doesn't say how far the magnetic field is going and how far, how quick it deteriorates. 
So uh, that isn't a very good measurement. So what we do is measure our magnetic field, what goes through the body, because that's what counts. And so even though we start out with a manufacturer's magnet that is 3950, 3950 gauss, we feel that means virtually nothing because uh, it's what goes through the body that counts. And you got to remember that magnetic field has got to go through the mattress and through your body. And that's when we say a 5 gauss magnetic field, that's what it would be in the middle of your body. Or a 10 gauss or a 20 gauss, that's what it would be in the middle of your body. So it's kind of like the distinction between eating food and absorbing it. It's what you absorb, right? And in your analogy, what you're saying is it's the amount of magnetism that goes through your body, period. It's not just the right. amount of gauss. That's right. And interestingly enough, uh, from your closest part to the magnets, which would be your rump uh, and your... Uh, wing bones, in other words, your scapulas, uh, they would be higher, and what comes out your breast is going to be lower. But it's only by two or three gauss difference between the bottom and the top. You said in many interviews that four, five tenths, one, gauss. one of the gauss is available now in terms of the magnetic field. Five tenths of one gauss is what we have here in North America. And what does that mean? It means that uh, it's very low, as opposed to what we had here originally during the Babylonian Empire. It was at least three gauss, and some areas it was five gauss. Now, when I interviewed you seven years ago, you gave me an analogy, and you said, every hundred years, the Earth loses 5% of its magnetic field. Is that still true? That is correct. But in some areas of the Earth... Uh, it's actually moving faster than that. Has anybody ever asked you before, what does the magnetite in our body relate to receiving magnetic field inputs? The only magnetite we have in our body is in the pineal gland there, and it's not very well developed, let's put this way. It's much more developed in birds and, and fish and things like that, but We have and animals. Uh, we have a very poorly developed directional gland there. So you're not sure that the magnetite we have in our bodies has any connection to the magnetic field as far as we know? As far as we know, none. And because it's such a minute amount, uh, we've tried, you know, people going in MRIs don't get disorientated and, you know, there's none, none of that sort of thing and it doesn't pull the magnetite to the brain tissue or anything like that. You see, it takes... Has magnetism has everything to do with volume of the, of the magnetite. A tiny little speck of it uh, has very little uh, pull from a magnetic field. But uh, a large magnet in the middle of the body going into an MRI would, would kill the person because it would pull the, the magnet to the brain. So uh, worrying about magnetite in the body is... Uh, Let's put it this way, is a no-brainer if you know anything about the physics of magnetism. Why do you speak a lot about valence electrons? When you're discussing the science of magnetism, you use that phrase a lot, valence electrons. Why is that important and what is it? That's the outermost electron on the atom, and it's the one that binds two atoms together to make a molecule. It's the active one, in other words. And so without valence electrons, we don't have any chemical reactions. So uh, it's, the, uh, it's the one that's shared. It's shared between two atoms to make a molecule, and, and then molecules bind again to make other molecules and to make uh, enzymes and protein and muscles and what have you. I know that you're very conservative, Dr. Dean, in the way that you articulate the science of this, and you're very responsible the way you do it. I know that you had shared about the rat that had gained all this weight when the magnetic field went down. How is this affecting people that are overweight or obese? And have you gotten any type of testimonials from people who began sleeping on the bed and within months were actually finding they were losing weight? No, I don't have any testimonials of that. Uh, so uh, I can tell you why that is true, because along with uh, a person's lack 
Uh, well, let's start start from the beginning. The reason the the mice started eating huge amounts of food was because they had a, felt a need for energy.